Hi, my name is Neil Bubke, and I'm the Director of Music and Fine Arts here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. I'd like to welcome you to our third concert in our summer live stream concert series. This evening, we'll be listening to Joseph Hauer. He has an amazing program in store for us, starting with Beethoven's Pathetique Sonata, followed by the Andante Spionata and Grand Polonaise in E-flat major by Chopin. After that, he'll be playing Gaspard de la Nuit by Ravel, and his concert will finish with the Sweet Andalusia by Ernesto Lacuona. Joe is a native, Joseph is a native of Wisconsin. He's the artistic director of the Fox River Valley Chamber Fest and the staff pianist at the Milwaukee Ballet Academy. Joseph performs regularly as a soloist and chamber musician across the country, most recently in Sitka, Alaska, Milwaukee, Appleton, and Valley Cottage, New York. These include solo and collaborative performances at the Sitka Performing Arts Center, the Otis Theater, the Wisconsin Conservatory of Music, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Peck School of the Arts, Fox River Chamber Fest, Hyde Music, Steinway and a Sandwich, and Young Masters Recital Series. Joseph was, a form, was formerly an artist in residence at the Apollo Music Festival and the Bermuda Piano Festival. He is a substitute pianist with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra and has soloed with the Oberland Orchestra, the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra, and the Fox Valley Symphony Orchestra. Prior to moving to Milwaukee, Joseph served as an adjunct faculty at NYU Steinard, where he completed a master's degree in piano performance with Ateri and Jeparidza. His undergraduate studies were with Peter Takas at Oberlin Conservatory. He collaborates with the music program at UWM and accompanies the Lakeshore Chorale in Sheboygan. When he's not engaged in classical music, Joseph enjoys biking, snowboarding, high-risk water sports, and improvising jazz. Let's welcome Joseph Hauer.
Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Neil. And thank you to my silent audience. So, um, was there any reason you decided to begin tonight's program with a Beethoven sonata? Yes. So, um, this July, we had planned to have the fourth annual Fox River Chamber Fest, and it was going to be a celebration of Beethoven's 250th birthday, um, which happens this year. He was born in 1770. Unfortunately, it had to be canceled, so I thought I would do a mini celebration by having Beethoven begin tonight's program. And actually, Beethoven was the same age as I am now when he wrote that piece. How old is that? Do I have to say? Uh, he was 27. Well, um, we're looking forward to this next piece on the program. Uh, this is a Chopin piece that a lot of Americans don't know. Can you tell us a little bit about the Andante Spianata? Absolutely. So Spianato means um, level or smooth. So the opening um, is not unlike a, a nocturne of Chopin. Um, and it was actually composed a few years after the Polonaise was. So originally, um, the Polonaise was written and set with orchestra. And um, Chopin later on added an orchestral interlude in between the Andante and the Polonaise, and then um, also composed the Andante to begin. Um, originally, it was for piano and orchestra, but um, Chopin himself made this arrangement for piano solo. Chopin's Andante, Spianata, and Grand Polonaise.
Thanks again, Joe. That was uh, incredible. Um, amazing to me how much power you can get out of our piano. It's a very nice Steinway B. There's a <laughs> lot of power to be had from it. Uh, so the next piece on your program is um, the Gaspard de la Nuit. And uh, that's a piece that anybody who performs in international piano competitions uh, often learns. It's considered one of the most difficult pieces in all of the piano repertoire. Uh, can you explain to us just a little bit of what makes uh, this Ravel piece so challenging? Absolutely. Um, so this piece I find very descriptive and evocative. Um, I last year played Pictures at an Exhibition by Mussorgsky, and to me that piece was very descriptive. So all of the um, melodic ideas or accompaniments um, or little figures that were within the piece all really described something that were in the paintings. Um, this piece, though, um, there, are, there are parts, for example, in the second movement, there's a bell tone that continues throughout the entire piece, um, the same notes without variation, um, and that's supposed to um, describe a bell ringing. Um, but at the same time, um, these, the three movements of Gaspar don't really follow the storyline necessarily of the poems that they're based on. Um, they evoke the poems and set the scene of the poems um, and tell a story in a more imaginative way. So, so the first movement, it's um, Ondine, and that's a water nymph. Is that right? Correct. She's um, attempting to seduce a mortal to come live with her at the bottom of a lake. So you can imagine how that might turn out for the mortal. Are you sure that's appropriate to play in the church? Well, um, I'm about to, so <laughs> I'll have to go to confession later. And the uh, second movement you said was Le Gibe? Yes, the second movement is um, it's about a corpse uh, hanging on a gibbet, and it's in the desert, and there is a, a, a bell from a faraway city uh, tolling in the distance. And then, I, I, I strongly encourage you, um, people who are listening at home, um, Google the work, and on Wikipedia you can get the entire um, poem, all three poems that these three movements are based on, so I'd highly recommend that. And the final movement, Scarbo, is that like a troll? Yes, Scarbo is a troll or a goblin. Uh, he comes out at night and just causes a little bit of mischief. Um, sometimes he's pirouetting. Uh, on the floor or across the floor like a top. Sometimes his shadow makes him seem like he's as tall as a Gothic cathedral. Um, but at the end, um, the poem describes him as being extinguished like a candle. Well, speaking of mischief, uh, I'm going to throw you a curveball here, Joe. Awesome. Um, I just received a text that we need to quickly reboot our live stream. It's still working right now, but if we can just take 10 minutes, or two minutes, I'm sorry, two minutes, to do a quick reboot on the system, it'll ensure that the remainder of the program goes smoothly. So during these two minutes, I'd like to invite you to do as uh, Joseph recommended, Google the poetry for Maurice Ravel's Gaspar de la Nuit. That's right. And then in two minutes time, just come back to the church website and click on view now. We'll see you in two minutes.